A good old-fashioned short track with multiple grooves, a racer's favorite. We're going to run the second part of a doubleheader as Progressive American Flat Track returns to New York. I'm the best dude here as far as ability-wise. I really just need to go out there and do one thing, and that's to win. We worked so hard this year. The team worked so hard. Let the race begin. We're underway. The carrot is there. Can he go after it? It doesn't take much for a guy to go down. Wow, that was close. That was the pressure point. Looking fantastic. Wow, I did not expect this. If he ruffles some feathers along the way, so be it. Can't say these guys aren't tough. They take the win. Unbelievable run. You don't often see domination like this. How impressive is that? What a performance. We haven't been disappointed. Oh, this is going to be good. The Mission Foods New York Short Track Part 2 presented by Mad Max Indian Motorcycles. We had great racing on night one, led by Sammy Halbert, who won a showdown over the final couple of laps to defeat Briar Bauman. Bauman going to look to bounce back here. Everything he learned from night one. Let's see if he can turn the tables on Halbert and never, ever, ever count out Jared Meese looking to get his short track game back in action after finishing in third on night one. Jason Wygan and the former Grand National Champion Brad Baker here. Kristen Beat patrolling the racetrack and podium. The big story here is Sammy Halbert. What a comeback to get the win on night one. Came in with an injury and then this happened in the semi. Yeah, that was one of the ugliest crashes I've seen in a long time. Had a 340-pound motorcycle land on top of him. You see right here, just tucks the front. Larry Pegram has nowhere to go. So does Brandon Robson, lays it down right into the air fence. Luckily, they're all able to make the restart. Yeah, incredibly. Then he comes back for the main and he's leading. Then late in the race, Briar Bauman pounces and Halbert comes right back at him. And that's a veteran type move. And he'd be able to hold it all the way to get the win. And making this even more impressive, he had missed a couple of rounds of racing with a broken foot. He's just on the mend from that. And like the pinky bone, I guess they couldn't really like save part of it. So I guess what they do is they put some external pins in there to, to hold it apart and allow the uh, like scar tissue and stuff to form between that. Um, so I had external pins in there for six weeks, six weeks, which sucked because I couldn't go racing because I wasn't allowed to put weight on it. Um, so, but yeah, as soon as we got the pins out, six weeks um, into the deal, I started to heal and get better. But man, it was a pretty brutal ordeal. Like the different processes of it like hurt really bad. Like initially it was just the first few days after surgery were like the, like the worst. And then even just getting the stitches out set me like back a, like a long way. So it was really like one of the more painful things I've had to go through. Um, but, uh, and then like to go through all that and then have like, again, one of the worst wrecks I've been in yesterday it's just like I just kept getting beat down beat down but uh so that's that's what made that win that much more special special to be able to come back after all that and uh and get get the job done you can literally see he's bruised and battered even on his face meanwhile the points Brandon Robinson a rough one Jared Meese he could be the one to watch here Brad yeah he really could he's starting to pick away at Brandon Robinson he really needs to finish in front of Briar tonight be able to get himself on the points that much more. Yeah, Robinson out of the top five of the last race. Mies finished third, and Bauman continues to pull away in points based on the runner-up ride last night. But it's a totally different situation. Track can really change from night one to night two, correct? Yeah, it really can. I mean, uh, there's a lot cooler on night two. It looks like there's quite a bit more moisture in the racetrack. This overhead shot, you can really see how it's a D, and how tight turn one is. And even coming off of turn four, that wall comes up super quick. And we saw, and you can see it there, two different grooves on night one, high line, low line. Let's get to some highlights. Mission Super Twins class semi number one. And there you see how wide this racetrack is. Yeah, you, these guys are carrying a lot of momentum around the outside and see Jared Vanderkoy starting to get a run on these guys. It's Jared Meese down on the inside. Yeah, but the top line for the 20 of Vanderkoy, see if it works. Yeah, Davis Fisher set fast time this, this night. Not quite fast enough to bring, bring home the win here, though. Jared Meese brings it home. All right, he just stuck to the inside, and in the end, it worked for the multi-time series champ, Jared Meese. We go to semi number two. See Robinson running the high line. Brandon Price down low. Again, everyone experimenting. Getting crazy down there for a second, but the problem is Briar Bauman's getting away. Yeah, he's looking really good. He's so awesome at being able to get the bike turn. Brings home semi-final number two win. And that paddle behind J.D. Beach got shuffled back. Robinson and Price were able to push him back to fourth. 
in a good fight, and the top two riders in those two semis, we see them into this. It's the Mission Foods Challenge, five grand on the line, winner take all, in a four lap shootout. So you've got Mies, Bauman, Vanderkoy, Robinson. Let's go! Looks like possibly a great hole shot by Briar Bauman. Mies gonna try to tuck in beneath him, and Vanderkoy and Robinson, and the Mission Foods Roof systems, the Dallas machines, they're gonna go up to the high line. Yeah, they're not gonna play follow the leader, they're just gonna go to the top and try to get on the gas and carry as much momentum as they can, but slips a little wide, doesn't get as much of a run as they needed to. Okay, so Robinson now taking the measure of his teammate, Vanderkoy, he's in third, now going after Mies for second, but Mies, the inside line holds up. Yeah, Briar just getting off the corner, it's a little bit better, you see right there, he gets his foot up, gets the bike driving really soon. Mies going to reset, go back after Briar Bauman. No points on the line here in the series, but definitely confidence momentum. 5,000 extra dollars never hurts. But you know Mies, he wants to win every race he lines up for. Yeah, if he's able to go back-to-back -back Mission Challenge wins, be good for his bank account, good for his confidence <laughs> going into the main event. Mies, though, not giving up on it. We're down to the last lap of this four-lap showdown. It goes quick on a short track. Mies is really running it in deep. Oh, let's see here in the final corner. Mies gets to the rear wheel of Bauman. Does he have anything in the drive off the corner? No. Bauman holds on, but that was a good showing from Mies down the stretch. Yeah, Mies was coming on strong right there at the end. He was figuring something out. Maybe this will be a good showing for what's going to come in the main event. Yeah, that's what really matters. That's when we pay points. Let's send it down to Kristen Briar Bauman's tops so far. Briar, you took the whole shot off the start there, and I'm kind of curious, you took the high line on the sight lap. Was there something maybe you didn't see up there, or was that a decoy move? I know you like hunting. I'm a hunter, man. I'm a bow hunter. I, uh, I hunt deer, and I'm hunting lines out there. I don't... <laughs> The track was way better than uh, than last night, so everyone that came out, that was uh, that was a lot cooler than what we did last night in the Dash for Cash. So I said earlier I don't want to ride around the bottom, so I'm always checking out uh, what's good up top. But nonetheless, whether we go top, bottom, or indifferent, the uh, Indian Motorcycle Powered by Progressive, that's an S-Cycle. Progr uh, progressive, yeah. Um, Dave and Michelle have this thing dialed in, so does Dean. And uh, I'm out of breath. I don't know if I'm going to make the whole main event. <laughs> How about that intensity? Just four laps, and these guys are already worn out fighting for traction and position on a short track. So Briar Bauman, no surprise, he's the one they're aiming for in the singles class. Dallas Daniels resuming his championship chase. Stay with us. Progressive American Flat Track is brought to you by Mission Foods, which has you covered with race day recipes that are too fast, too tasty. Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com slash progressive. And by Law Tigers, you never have to ride alone. Welcome back, Progressive American Flat Track. Well, the teenager Dallas Daniels in his second season after winning the title last year in singles as a rookie, expected to dominate this year, but he had actually lost the points lead until last night when he put together a great charge late in the race to overhaul Trevor Bruner, take the win, and slice almost all of Max Wells' points advantage away. He's now down just one. That was big for Daniels, but only finished ninth and fifth in the previous two races. There you go, he and Whale almost tied at the top now, Brad. Yeah, that was a great uh, showing for Dallas Daniels. I mean, only one point out of the lead. Max really has to be on the gas tonight to be able to keep that points lead. Yeah, Whale was only eighth last night, so the KTM folks, they're going to have to figure out this slick surface because clearly Daniels has it dialed and never count out Henry Wiles, the veteran lurking in third. Here's Kristen. At round nine in the AFT singles class, the top four riders all on a different brand of bike. Yamaha, Honda, KTM, and Suzuki all represented there. Now I checked in with Red Bull KTM's Max Whale, who happens to only lead Dallas Daniels by one point in the AFT singles standings. He told me something that is true in all three classes this year. With the depth of competition, a top five, top ten won't get you there. Not even a top three. You have to race for wins. He also told me you have to have a complete day. That means from the time you unload the bike, until the time the checkered flag drops, the rider and the bike both have to be perfect all day long because that's where your competition is at. Well, that's what makes it so fun to watch, and you never know who's going to find the form. Tanner Dean leading here on the 38 early as we show you highlights of semi number one. Yeah, Tanner won this race back in 2018, so not a stranger going fast here on short track. 
On demand, gets it up front ahead of Kevin Stallings. Haven't seen Stallings up front as much this year previous as previous, so maybe tonight's the night. And then another good battle here. You got Cole Zabala, Dallas Daniels in semi two. Yeah, awesome to see Cole back up to speed after a wrist injury. It's his first race back. So yeah, good to see him back in form. But look at Trent Lowe on the Suzuki lurking there on the Wally Brown racing team. And all the while, Dallas Daniels starting to pull away. So finding his form here in New York, if he goes back to back at the main event tonight, it would completely change the look of this series because Max Whale has been struggling to find the pace on this short track. So there's Tanner Dean. He's got the first grid position based on that great run in the semi. There's Daniels. What do you think tonight? We saw great racing on night one. Can we repeat it? Max Whale, oh, that's the big question. Can he figure this out, Brad? I really think he can. I mean, uh, there's a lot more moisture laid down. It's a lot cooler tonight than it was the night before. Uh, so we'll see if these guys are able to really roll around the outside better than what they were earlier on. You've seen there in the semifinals, it was faster down in the bottom. It might change here now that the sun's gone down. Yeah, it looks totally different. Okay, so well, fifth of the grid. That's not too bad. That's better than where he was last night. The young Australian clinging to the points lead. Dallas Daniels looking to make it back to back. Tanner Dean, Kevin Stallings, a lot of contenders. Let's go racing. Oh, looks like possible great hole shot from the bottom for Tanner Dean. I thought Stallings had the jump, but the inside is going to work for Dean on the 38 to take the lead. Daniels gets shuffled back. Yeah, you see quite a few riders already going to the top. I think one rider is Morgan Mischler. Look at Mischler all the way from the third row. Looks like he's in the top five on the first lap from the third row. That's impressive. He was third last night, and he loves the high line. If that thing works its way in, he's going to be tough to hold back. He's already made a bunch of passes. Yeah, Brandon Kitchen and Ferran Carduce are up there as well, making up time. You don't even see Mischler halfway through the corner. He's so high up there, but he's... He's in the lead, lap two, he's already in the lead. Unbelievable! Let's see if he can get the drive off to hold it. Dean on the inside, we're trying to get him back. Morgan Mischler getting it done. Hey, you see the guys on the bottom just slipping around, not able to you know, get into the corner nearly as fast. Oh, Dean has it figured out though, he's coming right back. Hard to even figure who is in the lead right now. Then you got Trent Lowe in third in the yellow Suzuki. Yeah, I'm gonna call it Mischler to the number one right now. For sure, it's it's hard to pass when you're down there too, because everybody's on the lowest line. Unless somebody makes a mistake or you really get aggressive, it's it's difficult to pass when you're down on the bottom. Okay, now we see it. The 13 of Mischler beginning to march away, and and he is known for running that high line, not just here, right? Yeah, he he's always the first one really to go up there and try it out. I mean, hey, he's not a follow the leader type of guy. I mean, you get on the bottom, like I'm saying, I mean, it's so hard to pass. You can see it is rolling around the outside in the top screen there. It's carrying so much momentum. We can see where Tanner Dean's slipping around. Yeah, and Dean was battling it out with 21 of Bruner. Like you said, so hard to pass as they're shuffling down there. Clear racetrack for Mischler to try to pull away. And now it's up to Tanner Dean to hold on to second with about uh, 14 riders right there behind him. For sure. And I'm, I'm looking back at uh, both Brandon Kitchen, Ferran Carduce, and even Max Whale is up there too. I mean, Obviously, the top line is faster, so if those three that are running up top as well can get their momentum up, they might be going on by the guys on the bottom as well. Yeah, as far as the points chase, so Daniels is ahead of Whale for now, but Daniels, C in blue, is on the bottom. The top might be quicker, and that's where Whale is. He's about two positions further back than the number one of Daniels at the moment, and Daniels, nothing he can do. He has low and Dean right in front of him. He cannot get around. And it's, it's easy to make a mistake, so Tanner Dean has to be spot on, and he's going to let these guys get by on the bottom. And Daniels is the one that would hope to take advantage of that. Here on the Eston Cindy Yamaha, your defending champion, won the title, as we said, last year as a rookie. It's been a bit of a struggle. He's been consistent this year, but only two race wins, and one of them came on the hybrid half-paved TT track in Atlanta. Only one win so far this year on a more traditional oval. Got to pretty, find some room. Go pretty, ahead. Pretty surprising for him as he was so dominant in the last part of the season last year. But we're, uh, we're getting to the closing of the season, so see if he's starting to come on strong. Yeah, it's go time, and Maxwell has not made up ground behind him. Meanwhile, Morgan Mischler pulling away. Can he grab the win?
Progressive American flat track. It's the Mission Foods New York short track. Well, we knew multiple grooves would be the story here. There's a low line and there's a high line. Morgan Mishler has ridden the high line best. He's pulling away. Dallas Daniels now, he is experimenting as well. He's going up high to battle Brandon Kitchen. I think that's a smart move by him because obviously it's uh, better up top for Morgan Mishler. And down on the bottom, you're just kind of following those guys and waiting for a mistake. But as we say that, he goes back down to the bottom. I mean, it's really hard to set up a motorcycle to be on the bottom, work on the bottom and the top, and not to mention for the rider, I mean, the shutoff points and this how you ride the motorcycle is completely different from the top to the bottom. So watch closely. Kitchen is on the outside behind Daniels, and the next rider in line in orange, now down to the low line, that is Max Whale. That's the rider that has the points lead by just one point over Daniels. So a race within a race. If Whale could salvage this, if he could finish tonight ahead of Daniels, that would be huge. It really would. I mean, Max can uh, can see them ahead of him, and it looks like Tanner Dean might be slowing up the pace a little bit on the bottom. Could let Max catch up to these guys. Yeah, you've had this Tanner Dean Trent Low battle, the red and the yellow, for second the entire race, and that's what Daniels is trying to solve. How can he get around these two? And as we say that, Max goes right back up to the top. I mean, he's searching. I mean, that's not necessarily a good sign if he's not feeling completely comfortable you know, in one line or the other, but uh, it's good for him to be searching. Look at Trent, it's a great run, gonna shove it up underneath the Tanner, but no, Tanner shuts the door. Oh, I thought that was gonna lead to contact. Lowe's gonna try again. This is for second place. Yeah, Tanner holds on to it for the time being. And Brandon Kitchen has just stuck to that outside the whole time. It might pay off. Oh, Daniels has an opening on Dean, so does Lowe. Yeah, Lowe got him coming off of turn two, and that just opened the door enough for Dallas Daniels to sneak underneath as well. Oh, but I'm watching Kitchen here on the outside. Don't give up on that outside line. It might just work. Now, I really think it's going to pay off for him. Obviously, it has for Morgan Mishler up top. He's not having to really fight with those guys on the bottom. He's able to focus on his line and keeping up momentum. Kitchen on the Vanson Hines Husqvarna side by side with Lowe. Kitchen is going to get the spot. Yeah, you can see Max Whale is kind of like in between. He runs up high in three and four and down low in one and two. Maybe that's the ticket. It might be. He could get on the outside. There he is. He might be able to get the number one of Daniels. That's exactly what he needs to do, but the time is running out. Here it is. Morgan Mishler is long gone in the Mission Foods Roof Systems of Dallas machine. The win for the lead, it's over. It's this battle for points, for podium positions, everything on the line. A clutch move for Dallas Daniels. Yeah, rolls underneath Trent. That's a great, got himself in the podium position. It's all but over up front. What a run. You have a track where the high line works. You're gonna have a tough time dealing with Morgan Mishler. The lucky number 13 is long gone. But let's see what happens for second. Can Daniels get Kitchen? Yeah, Kitchen has a good run. and see if he's able to hold on to it at the line. Mishler takes the win in dominant fashion. A race to the line for the number two spot. It's going to go to Kitchen over Daniels. Morgan Mishler's team is pumped third last night. They get the win this time. Yeah, that's awesome. That's Mark Muth, father of the late Alec Muth from Wisconsin, helping out Morgan Mishler. So awesome to see those, those guys get a win. They've been determined to do it, been so close. It's been a long time since it's been uh, 2018 in the Texas half mile, the last time Morgan got a win. Been much deserved. Oh yeah, the rider out of Wisconsin, he is happy. And honestly, for a singles race at a short track, that was a considerably large lead, 2.2 seconds at the line. Kitchen and Daniels are right down to the wire. Kitchen gets second, but Daniels does finish ahead of Whale, who is fifth, low between them. Let's go down to Kristen. Morgan, your last win came in 2018. It's been a minute. Uh, your first win of the season. Morgan, you were the first rider to really make that high line work tonight. It took conviction to figure that out. What indication did you have that that line would work for you, or did you just take a chance? The biggest thing is watching the production twins. Brock Schwarzenbacher told me the line was kind of going away on bottom. And just uh, nailed the start. It was sitting pretty good. And uh, biggest thing was just, you know, the traffic ahead. and. I mean, I, I came out of turn four and I was do, already doing really well. So, you know, then it was just a matter of like, well, how high can we run it? And, you know, after one lap, two laps, it was, uh, it was pretty incredible to come through the pack from the third row. It sucks doing it from the third row, 
but all of this is impossible without Mission Foods, Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas. It's great, you know, three years sucks, so it was a long three years, but it feels so good to be up here. Yeah, he'd had four podiums this year, so he had come close multiple times. He's up to third in points, actually. Rough weekend for the likes of Mikey Rush and Henry Wiles, so they're pushed to fourth and fifth. Dallas Daniels will finish third, just behind Brandon Kitchen, who held him off. Good run. BK making a return to the podium this season. BK, uh, you also chose the high line. You and Morgan made it work for you. Uh, how relieving is it to get this first podium of the season? Yeah, we've had a lot of ups and downs this year. Uh, I was ready to give up today, but my stepdad told me there's no giving up here, so we got to figure it out. So I came from the fourth row, just followed Merg, and got it done. Congratulations on the podium. Is there anyone you want to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Husqvarna, Vance and Hines, uh, Tim Bennett from TCD, Bell Helmets, uh, Hinson, Micah Meadows, Gelfer, and Motor X for keeping the bikes good. That was enough for second. Now Daniels, that third place, man, he would have loved to have got Kitchen. He couldn't get it done, but he does now emerge with the points lead by just two over Max Whale. Here's Kristen again. Dallas Daniels now assumes the points lead in the AFT singles class. Dallas, a dicey race. You guys were all over the track, trying out different lines, figuring things out as you go. What did you learn during that main event? Yeah, you know, it was pretty hectic. There's a lot of guys up there. And uh, if I could just get off the line, you know, I'm sorry to the team and uh, all the sponsors and stuff. I just struggled with starts all weekend for some reason. I was either spinning or wheeling and kind of was stagnant for a while. I couldn't really do nothing. There was guys coming around me on the high side, and I was wondering if I should go up there. And, you know, it was a little tricky, but all in all, we were able to figure it out and get up here on the box and retain the points lead, which is what matters. Um, just a big thanks to everybody being in my corner, looking out for me and ready for Peoria. Morgan Mischler going to take a well-deserved victory lap. If he wants to do it right, he should run the high line while celebrating that victory that came from that race line. We'll be right back. Progressive American Flat Track is brought to you by Cat Rental Store, the official heavy equipment supplier of American Flat Track. Progressive insures over 5 million boats, motorcycles, and RVs. Get a quote in under four minutes at AmericanFlatTrack.com slash Progressive. And VP Racing Fuels has been fueling champions in virtually every form of motorsport on land, sea, and air since 1975. We're back to talk production twins class here in Progressive American Flat Track. Been tracking the story of Dalton Gauthier, former champion of our singles class. So the Vance and Hines, Harley Davidson, a breakthrough win at the Port Royal Half Mile a couple of weeks ago in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Robbie Bobby, who uh, runs his team, was very happy about that. Then he actually broke his foot last night, but still finished on the podium. Vance and Hines still digging deep. Vance and Hines has been around since 1979, and it's always been involved in racing. Racing is a key part of our product development process. Whether we're making air intakes, tuners, or exhaust, we are learning every weekend at the racetrack. We're always trying to make great sounding products, great looking products, and great performing products. And really a racing venue just gives us that platform where we're playing every weekend and we're learning, and we're applying those learnings to those products and getting better all the time. All Vance and Heinz products are made right here in Santa Fe Springs. And we've had this integrated philosophy in our company for a long time where we like to manufacture all our products. We bring in raw materials and we're cutting pipe, we're welding pipe, we're bending pipe, we're milling out aluminum to make our air intakes, to make our exhaust products. And we do that all right here in Santa Fe Springs, including our electronics product. We make these products for Harley Davidson, Honda, BMW, all the major brands. Advanced Heinz is really all about the rider. We've got more riders working at our company today than we've ever had. We are so focused on innovation in our products, and the future is really exciting. We're hoping the racing is exciting as well. We'll give you the highlights of the production twins class. There is Gautier of the Vance and Heinz Harley riding with a foot injury. Still going to go for the win tonight. These guys are tough. There's Corey Texper who won last night. A rare moment, Texter does not get the whole shot in the main event. Yeah, this time looks like Dan Bromley on the other Yamaha gets the whole shot, but look at uh, Dalton Gauthier, that ankle not holding him back right now. Yeah, does not care. He is battling hard for the lead and trying to keep Texter behind him. Then Texter drops back, and how about Cameron Smith making the move for second? Yeah, Cameron Smith has been on a man on a mission, looking really good on the Fredericktown Yamaha, coming around the outside. Of Dan Bromley looks like he's gonna make it stick. 
Oh, he was second in our main event last night. He has come so close to wins in flat track so many times. When he took the lead here, the crowd loved it. And now it's up to him to try to hold Bromley off and seal the deal of what would be his first ever win in this series. And he gets it. A very popular win for Cameron Smith. Yeah, Benny and Sheila, his parents, super excited. Great family from Pennsylvania. Kid's been at this for a long time. Awesome to see him get his first win. Yeah, had a couple of podiums this year, so starting to put the pieces together. He's gonna take mom for a ride there on the victory lap. Cameron Smith's in the record books as a race winner. And Coach A got second, even with a broken ankle. And that allows him to maintain second in the series points. Smith up to fourth. Been a real breakthrough season. Struggled a bit in the singles class for a few years, but he has found himself in production twins. Texter, not what he wanted, only a third. Still maintaining a big points lead. Yeah, how about it, Cameron Smith? With his first AMA Pro win in the American Flat Track Series, Cameron Smith. Cameron, during that race, woo! Well, <laughs> congratulations, bud. During that race, you made the pass on Dan Bromley. You made it stick. No, you're fine. How meaningful is this moment for you and your family? Oh, my gosh. We're, we're so excited just to come out here and get a win finally. You know, after getting second two times, I think it was – I think we're ready and I could do it, and I showed it. And big thanks to Jeremy. You know, he made me feel like I was selling the ship on dry land. I was so smooth out there. Cameron, I know you and your mom had a bet that if you earned your first win this series, she would get a tattoo. Are you ready to see it happen? Oh yeah, most definitely. She gonna get that thing. <laughs> That's what you love to see. Good luck, Mom. Okay, let's Dunlop Tire talk our way through New York, Brad. Yeah, Super Twins will all be taking the medium compound, the R5. There's not a whole lot of tire wear out there, so you don't need that harder compound. It's most important to get a tire that's uh, had a couple heat cycles on it, a little bit scuffed in. You don't want to go out with a brand new tire, so these guys will be scuffing in edges all throughout qualifying. Oh, so many little variables that can make all the difference at a short track like this. Great racing our previous night. Sammy Halbert just edged Briar Bauman. The rematch is up next on NBCSN. Mission Super Twins main event looms here from Wheatsport, New York. Let's get it going and send it to Kristen B. So guys, just a moment ago, I asked Jared Mees after watching that singles main event and seeing just how Morgan Mischler made that high line work. I asked Jared, is it a reasonable consideration for this Super Twins main event? He said, honestly, the bottom's blown out. The top is probably blown out. It's anyone's game. And at this point, he doesn't know where he's going to go on track. I do, however, find it interesting that Jared Mees and Briar Bauman both lined up next to each other on the bottom on that starting grid. Yeah, just, you know Mies is always thinking, always strategizing, always trying to figure out a way. He was third on the previous night. A win would be huge for him. Jared Vanderkoy starts third in the grid. He looked very good throughout qualifying. But I don't know. This track, it just seems like one little thing can make all the difference. Yeah, it really could. I mean, Mischler obviously showed that the high line was faster in the singles main, but that high line could possibly get wore out too. It could dry out and go right back down to the bottom by the end of this main event. We're just gonna have to see. Okay, so me starting down low on the number nine. Let's go racing. This is going to be really good. Ten minutes plus two laps. The best of the best. Mission Super Twins ready for launch. Ooh, they held that a long time. Briar Bauman almost jumped, and it's going to allow the 20 of Vanderkoy to take the lead. Yeah, great hole shot by Jared Vanderkoy. Brand Robinson up around the top. Jared Meese. Decides to go right to the top all off the bat, but look at Briar Bauman and the rest all down the bottom. Briar getting all out of shape coming off of turn four. Whoa. Whoa! And he almost came into Brandon Robinson. Yeah, they locked bars there at the end of the straightaway. That was close. Okay, are these mistakes by Bauman or is he experimenting? He's literally crisscrossing the racetrack. I think he's experimenting, but in the in the process, he's kind of getting tangled up with other riders. He's gonna have to settle into a line here soon. Yeah, that's a desperate tactic there when the pack is this close early. Meanwhile, Jared Mees, high line is working for him. And you see Breyer got it turned early and kind of went through the center of the racetrack. That was the line that we haven't seen yet. Sammy Halbert has emerged at the head of this group. I don't even know how he did that. That's the 20 of Vanderkoy. They pushed him back. So Halbert looking for back-to-back -back wins. 
This is getting scary to watch these uh -huh. guys. I'll uh, say so you can see how Briar gets to turn a lot sooner than everybody else, but it kind of just leaves him in no man's land in the center of the corner where Sammy Halbert's just taking the line that he did last night, working good for him on the bottom so far. Never ceases to amaze me the trust these riders have in each other. It's a game of inches. They crisscross lines. They lean on each other literally inches apart and no problem. Now Brandon Robinson attacking Mies. They're running the outside with Halbert in the 69 down low. Yeah, Robinson looking the best that he's had all weekend. This is a track that suits his style a lot. We'll see what both Mies and Robinson are able to do up top. You know, sometimes it takes five, six laps to really get your marks down when you're running the top line and start to pick up momentum. Turns one and two working for Halbert down low. Three and four, he bobbled last time. Can he keep it smooth? Yes, but it's not as fast as Mies and Robinson up top. Yeah, you can see right there in the center, Sammy just has to wait for a long time before he's able to get back to the throttle. If he does get back to the throttle sooner, the bike will just slide sideways, and that's exactly what you don't want it to do. Yeah, you were telling me earlier, you really have to keep the bike in line on this type of surface. You really do. It takes a lot of patience on a track like this because you want to ride hard to be able to make up time, but sometimes you just go a little too fast. You end up making a mistake and going backwards. And all that experimenting early for Briar Bauman, he has not solved it. He is watching that top three, but he is not able to challenge them yet. It's Mies, Robinson, Halbert, and here's Bauman battling with Vanderkoy just behind. Yeah, he's kind of going a couple laps up top, a couple laps on the bottom, which he's not necessarily going to be able to get a, a rhythm in on either one unless he uh, kind of commits and starts to, to find his groove. Finding the groove is Mies. He has finally locked down the lead. He had had Halbert on his hip and Robinson right behind him. The last lap or so, he has started to stretch it. And Jared's really starting to find his line now. You know, sometimes if you run it in a little deep the lap before and make a mistake, you just you don't try to make the same mistake twice. Well, this is going to be interesting. Will that outside line hold up? Robinson's going to stay there. And, and if you're Halbert, do you keep running down low or do you get tempted to try what they're trying? I think he's probably best to try to just keep down low because, as we were saying before, I mean, as you've been running that line down there, if you go to the top line, it's just completely different. Your shut off marks, the way you, you ride the motorcycle. So, you know, sometimes it, you'll, you'll mess up three or four laps if you try to, to change the line in the middle of the race. All right, so if you're Halbert, you have to hope this inside line comes back in. He's third, but Mies and Robinson starting to get away. Then you have the battle right behind him. Very critical with your series points leader, Briar Bauman. Back there, he does not want to end this race off the podium, but he is losing ground and to the rider he does not want to lose it to. Jared Mies, never want to give Mies an opening in a championship. Here the, the engines on the bikes hitting the rev limiter on the back straightaway. That's the city's racetrack being two different straightaways. Yeah, spinning it all the way up to the top of the rev limiter. Jared Mies starting to get away here in New York. Progressive American flat track here on NBCSN, and Jared Mies has solved the New York short track here in Weedsport, third last night. But he just kept doggedly trying the outside line, and as it has worked its way in, he has worked his way away from the field. I'm looking back at Jared Vanderkoy, who's starting to pick up speed, following both what Rand Robinson and Jared Mies are doing. He could potentially get up and take that podium spot away from Sammy Halbert on the bottom. Oh yeah, he is there, but not able to go with him is Briar Bauman. So this is a big night for Robinson in second and your leader, Jared Meese, to make up points on Briar Bauman. Robinson and Halbert, man, they've been this close the whole time. Oh, for sure, but yeah, you're exactly right. This is not what uh, Briar wants to see happen. Maybe he's having a little bit of mechanical issue or just not quite had the setup and quite find the line tonight. Yeah, he nearly won last night's main event, battling with Halbert. Halbert is still good running in second or third, depending on when you look at it. But Breyer has lost a lot of ground. That shot coming off of turn four, you can see uh, Sammy Halbert's brake disc is glowing. He's riding the brake down there on the bottom. What that does is kind of like traction control, keeps the bike in line, keeps the wheel spin down, helps you get traction. What can you say about Jared Mees? A knee injury suffered before the Atlanta TT. Could not finish that race. Thought his championship, maybe his season was done. But I say it every week, 
I don't know anyone in any form of motorsport I met that is more competitive than Jared Meese. Maybe someone is as competitive, but no one eclipses this guy for just dogged determination. He loves the game, and the persistence is paying off as he is in position to win here on a short track. Yeah, right back in form. This is the racetrack that Jared always went good at, but like you said, he was one of, not, one of if not my most biggest rivals. I mean, the guy just puts his head down and never gives up. Yeah, determination and experience combined. And uh, right now, uh, I got to say, though, it looked like a dominant run. But as Robinson and Halbert keep pushing each other, they're actually inching back up on Mies a bit. Yeah, when you get out and lead like that, you kind of start to get on cruise control, not pushing it nearly as much. I mean, he doesn't know if he's gaining time or losing time. And the last thing you want to do on a track like this is start to ride a little too hard and you start making mistakes. So he has a little bit of a buffer room, but not too much. Yeah, and there's still plenty of time in a short track. Lots of laps left with about three minutes and two laps to go. And Robinson has every reason to push A, the race win on the line, but he doesn't want to give second up to Halbert. And Jared Vandercoy, I like his line coming into turn one. He kind of cuts to the center of the racetrack, cuts off a little bit of time on Brandon Robinson. He's going to get himself into the mix here, I believe. All right, so it's going to be three riders fighting for the last two podium spots and beginning to put some pressure on your race leader, Jared Meese. And there's Meese. I mentioned that determination. Yeah, he admits there's two Jared Meese. You'll, you'll meet the guy during the week, friendly, but he said on race weekends, I'm there for one reason only, and that is to win races, not to be friendly with people. Maybe that gives him the wrong reputation, but he can't turn it off. He's here to win, and he's going to need that determination because Robinson is pouring it on. Yeah, Brandon Robinson, you know, he had a couple races here at Pennsylvania where he's off, but now he feels like he's found his groove. Maybe the rule changes that they made just took the team a little while to get the bike set up back to where he was comfortable, but looking back and form now. Yeah, good point. A couple of races ago, they made some changes that the riders, such as Robinson and the Indian motorcycle, had to adapt to. This looks more like the form of Brandon Robinson in the early season where he won a couple of races. Can he win it tonight? Starting to run out of time. I'm really looking at Jared Vandercoy. He's, he's just an inch and up, but if Sammy Halbert just has one mistake, he's going to be able to roll around the outside. Three riders will take their shot down the stretch on Mies, who has had it under control for the majority of this main event. But Robinson has finally gotten away from Sammy Halbert. He would love to get this race win. Here's the battle for third, Halbert and Vandercoy. Yeah, Jared Vandercoy looked like he was scrubbing the air fence that last lap, just looking for every little bit of traction he could find. They have left Briar Bauman behind. That is no easy task. It shows you just how dialed these two riders are tonight. Vanderkoy wants the podium. Yeah, you can see Sammy just shuts it down a little bit early, doing a good job of keeping his wheels in line down on the bottom. That's not an easy thing to do. That could be a run down to the line for third if it ends like that. And as they push each other, I think Robinson's charge for Mies has stalled and Halbert has a shot at second place again. It almost seems like Robinson's kind of just waved the white flag and trying to bring it home, but he has to be careful because there's two hard chargers right behind him. Oh, it's going to be a fantastic run down the stretch. Halbert has stuck to the low line the entire race. It has worked for Vander Kooi up top. They have Robinson in their sights. Knees pulling away. I don't know if Robinson knows how close those guys really are. And time has expired, so it's two to go. Oh, he knows they're close now. This is going to be fun to watch. Three riders fighting for two spots. Yeah, he made a big mistake there in the middle of one and two, kind of sideways. See Jared Vandekoy riding on his rear wheel now. At the mission on board, these two riders are teammates. Back by Mission Foods and Roof Systems of Dallas. Oh, a different line there, and it's going to work for Vandekoy. Vandekoy takes over second momentarily, but looks like Brandon Robinson might be able to get a turn and go back underneath him. He does. Ooh, they almost collide in the high line, and you've got Halbert down to the bottom. Jared gets a turn in the center. Let's see, it's going to be a drag race. To the line, Mies wins, and I can't even call the battle for second. Oh, Jared Mies, Kenny Tolbert, the entire team, back on top. It's Vanderkoy taking second. What a race. 
That was a great race. You can see Sammy did some frustration. I think that means that he might have been off the podium. I think J.D. Beach might have got Briar Bauman right there at the end as well for a top five. Wow, that will push Bauman to sixth. But the man of the hour is Jared Meese, third win of the year. We mentioned the crew chief, Kenny Tolbert, just named to the American Motorcyclist Association Hall of Fame. That's one of the all-time best in this game, and they showed why tonight. So what a race. Vanderkoy just edges Roberts, Robinson. Halbert just misses the podium. Send it down to Mies. As you're making your way up the track, I saw you kind of find your confidence up there. And uh, I got to ask you, was this win what this team needed to reignite the passion for this season? Man, I, I always have a lot of passion and a lot of heart for what I do. I mean, but a win is always a good thing. And I said it earlier, like, you know, going and winning a mile, it's like, oh, yeah, he, he should. You know, I got a really great package on the mile, and I'm uh, older and really experienced. But, you know, I always had really great success on these slippery, small car tracks. And I, I see him the last couple of years kind of lose a little bit of touch with that, and Breyer's been just killing us with it, you know. But uh, so to come out here and actually win a, 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 like a half mile clay track, short track clay track, it just feels really phenomenal to um, to get that mojo back again. We made a couple changes after Port Royal that we thought could maybe, maybe help due to the rules. We had a solid 30 whatever it laps was the, every lap, and uh, I felt phenomenal. So looking forward to the rest of the season, and um, thank you. <laughs> Well, I say never count them out every week. You give him a win on a short track, they've got that game dialed back in. He's healed up from the knee injuries. You never know if a title run is still in the cards for Jared Meese. Progressive American Flat Track is brought to you by Indian Motorcycle, official partner of Progressive American Flat Track. And by Parts Unlimited and Drag Specialties, the official wholesaler of American Flat Track. And Mission Foods has you covered with race day recipes that are too fast too tasty. That's a wrap. A great double header. Two nights in a row. A fantastic racing from Weed Sports Speedway in New York. Jared Meese has taken the win and Jared Vanderkoy second. Jared Vanderkoy coming off a of four. How fast was your heart beating when you split Brandon Robinson and Sammy Halbert to earn a spot on the podium? You're cheering section pretty loud out here in New York. Oh, absolutely. You know, my girlfriend's family lives here in New York, so I got a lot of people that came out and supported me. Uh, but yeah, going through three and four that last lap, it was like, I'm in second, I'm in fourth, I don't know. Like, it was just one of those things, like, your mind just blacked out, and it, was, uh, it came through at the finish. It was close, and uh, that was a great race. It was fun. Congratulations. Well done on finding your way up here to the podium again, Jared. Oh, that was spectacular. Three riders right down to the line. Mies only down 22 points. He's within one race. And a nice stretch of events coming up for him, Brad. You're theorizing with a bunch of miles left that there is definitely an opportunity for Mies to dig this title out, especially if Bauman doesn't finish up right behind him. As tonight, he only finished sixth. Brandon Robinson is third in points, and he was third tonight. With two to go, we visibly noticed Brandon Robinson working his way backwards instead of forwards. I asked him when he got off the bike what was going on. He said he actually lost brakes with eight to go. How did you manage that race? Um, that was, uh, it was stressful. I mean, the beginning was a little chaotic. Me and Briar tang tangled bars on the front straightaway, and it was, uh, it was crazy. And I, from there, I just put my head down, and uh, man, Jared was running a really good race, and I felt like I was matching his pace and kind of inching up on him a little bit, and I think I was using so much brake to, to load the bike through the corner that I ended up just burning through it all, and like, you know, like I said, you know, eight laps ago or something like that, I just, uh, I went into turn one, and my foot went straight to the ground, and I it bounced off the air fence a little bit there. I'm like, whew, that was a, that was a scary moment, so uh, I just had to sort of back off the throttle a little bit earlier, getting in the corners and roll, and I knew I knew something was someone was going to come up on me in that case. I was going so much slower, but uh, regardless, uh, big, big turnaround for me from the last couple of races. And uh, man, I can't thank my team enough. The Mission Foods, uh, Roof Systems, Dallas, Texas, HDR, my tuner Ben Evans. They, these guys didn't give up on me even when I've been in a little bit of a funk here lately. And uh, man, so it's a good, uh, good positive end on the weekend. Well done, Brandon Robinson, and that will round out your podium here in Weedsport, New York. All right, thanks, Kristen. Next race is going to be the very unique Peoria TT, and then a stretch of miles. Do you think Jared Meese has a shot at a comeback? I really think he does. I mean, he has to get as close as he possibly can to Briar Bowman, I think has upper edge at Peoria, but those four miles coming up, 
you know, Jared Meese went in 2019 with all of the miles. So, yeah, it's definitely got a shot, or he definitely has a shot at making it back to get in the championship hunt. All right, we love it. The stretch run coming for Progressive American Flat Track, an emotional first ever win for Cameron Smith. A big victory for Morgan Mishler in singles. And congrats to Jared Mees for the win in Mission Super Twins. For Brad Baker and Kristen Beat, I'm Jason Wygant. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time from Peoria.